In this lesson, we will be working with folders. Let's talk folders. I showed you earlier in this more icon here, besides tasks and notes, we also had a folders icon. Watch what happens to my inbox when I select folders. You notice the inbox sort of grayed out for a minute and then it came back and it looks exactly the same except this folder list here on the left now has folder icons instead of not. What this does is it takes you into a folder mode in terms of your filing here in your folder pane. This folder pane is literally a series of folders in which information is stored both on the server of your email service, in this case Gmail, and locally here in Outlook on your PC. There are several types of folders that would appear here in this list in the folders pane. And we're going to talk about the several different types of folders and go through them so that you understand how they work, how they function, and why they're different. We're going to start first with local folders. Since there are several types of folders found in Outlook 2016, we want to go over the various types so that you have an understanding of them. And we're going to start with the one likely to be seen in your Outlook 2016 software, especially if you're a personal email user of Outlook 2016. The local folder. A local folder is called local because, well, frankly, it's stored just like that, locally, meaning on your physical computer. Any items that you put into this local folder will be available anytime you open Outlook 2016, and it may even be called local folder. In this example here on our screen, you can see it indicates this computer only. If you happen to be somewhere else and you access your email via the internet, you will be able to access email in your inbox, but anything stored in these local folders will not be accessible until you have access to Microsoft Outlook 2016 on the computer where the local folder is. Now, these are unique in one particular sense. If your email service is able to sync these items, then when you open your Gmail information on another computer, this data will sync across to that computer. And that's because it's a part of the Gmail service. And you can see here it says sync and sync issues. So this is related to Gmail syncing across multiple computers. Local folders allow you to store information on your computer. Let's tuck away our email here. And if I create a new folder by navigating to the Folder tab and choosing New Folder, Outlook must store that folder somewhere. And it stores it in this Outlook at gmail.com. And that is simply the account associated in this local machine to this Outlook software. Right now, this test folder is stored outside of the Gmail folder. You can see here that all of the items located in the Gmail folder are the items that will sync along potentially with calendar, contacts, journals, notes, and tasks, everything that syncs with your email service. If I take this test folder and I drop it into Gmail, it asks, are you sure you want to move the folder, test folder, inside to the folder Gmail? The answer is yes. Now, test folder is no longer a local folder, but it's a synced folder or a folder that if you add items into it will be available if you access Gmail on another machine. But let's talk about exchange folders. If you're in a business that is using a Microsoft Exchange server, most likely you are if your email is at and then a business name dot com, then likely your company is using an Exchange server. And Outlook 2016 synchronizes with this server at regular intervals. What this allows is for you to log on to your email service at another computer within your organization, logging into Outlook 2016 email account, your email account, and find all of your Outlook 2016 data. Everything. So if you go into another machine, you log on to the machine using your email access information, you can see your calendar, 
your email, your notes, your contacts, etc. at that other machine. The obvious benefit to this, of course, is if your hard drive crashes, all of your data is still on the Exchange server. So when the company provides you a new PC and you open Outlook 2016 for the first time on that new PC, logging in with your credentials, all of your Outlook 2016 data will be restored to this new PC. So there's obvious benefits to this, and this is why most businesses use an Exchange server. Let's talk lastly about public folders. If you're working in an organization where a lot of information is shared among many people, you are likely to be using what's known as public folders. The public folders section of the folder pane is likely at the bottom by default. You may very often see a sort of horizontal line that comes across here underneath your inbox folders, and you would see a list of other folders below. Those would likely be public folders. By default, your public folder would likely be called public folder hyphen and then your email address. Of course, the name can be whatever you want it to be or your company wants it to be, maybe the name of a project, the name of a work group, a team, etc. Within public folders, you can create an entire hierarchy of folders for whatever your need or purpose. The company I work for uses this to store project data within it. So you can access the particular project folder and all of the communication or information that is shared about that project can go into that folder. And the benefit of storing email and other project data in a public folder is that anyone who has access to the network can also access these same items by simply going to that folder and accessing the data. Emails and other items can be dragged and dropped into these folders they're used for easy data sharing and file sharing. The benefit is when you log onto your PC remotely when you're not at the office, you will still have access to these public folders and of course then your internal company network. Next, let me briefly talk about adding, deleting, renaming, and organizing folders. This process is the same no matter the folder type. But you can add new folders by navigating to the folder tab and selecting new folder. Depending on which type of folders you're working with, Select a folder in that section. If you're working with public folders, you'll select your public folder. If you're working in your inbox, you could select that. And then just select New Folder. And that will add a new folder. Prompt you for a name, and your folder's created. To delete a folder, it's as simple as right-clicking that folder and choosing Delete. To rename, it's the same. Right-click, Rename. You can, of course, copy, move, etc. as well. Organizing your folders is very important. Keeping your folders organized is what will keep your life or your work organized as well. And that completes this lesson on working with folders.